hi and welcome to my channel in this video if you're new my name is Sarah I am a mom to five and as you can see I'm out in the woods because we are camping right now as you can tell from the title of this video um, I was hoping to share with you some tips and tricks on how we go camping with kids I'm gonna do my best to try to impart any of the wisdom that I have from camping with children for the last 11 summers our oldest is ten and a half our youngest is seven months old and we have gone camping every single summer since we've well before we started having kids so this is our 15th summer as a couple camping sorry I have a hair on me um, but 11 summers with children in tow so we've gone camping with our the youngest we went camping with was about two weeks old all the way up till now ten and a half years old so we've had a huge range of ages over the years with our different kids we've come up here with me being pregnant and um, you know three to four young kids all young all at the same time so I am wanted to share what I have learned over the many years of camping with kids with you to help you uh, kind of get an idea of how it's like and the different things that I do to try to make it easier on us and more manageable. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna try to remember what it was like when we had so many young kids, all of them young at the same time, it's definitely changed as they've gotten older. Certain things are definitely easier because they've gotten older. Um, but if I can remember anything that we've done while they were younger, that might help you out. I would definitely wanna try to let you know about that. So I wanna go over um, sleeping arrangements in our tent, um, how we handle like going to the bathroom um, and also what our kids do to entertain themselves um, what they do for fun around here Ooh, something just fell um, and anything else I can think of that might be useful or helpful I have a whole playlist of videos related to camping so I will put that down in the description box down below in case you're interested in how I pack for tent camping how I set up the ants that are our tent I go thoroughly over that I made that video last year um, ideas for breakfast and lunches that we've done in the past and how to camp with a baby so I'm doing a separate video for camping with a baby versus camping with children in general so if any of those are interested interesting to you or you'd like to get more information about that please check those out down below as well so let's get started I think we'll go into the tent and show you how they sleep and I handle that type of stuff and then we'll just take it from there. As far as sleeping with kids goes, um, so far we have been able to keep everyone in the tent with us, although next year it may be changing as our older three girls are getting older, you know, 10 and a half, almost nine, and just turned seven. We are in the, you know, starting to think about possibly putting them in their own tent nearby, um, give them a little more, more space as they're getting bigger, and also they need the privacy too from, you know, their little brother and from dad even. Uh, so that we're, you know, thinking through the next step of camping, you know, the next level of camping with kids. But I just wanted to show you, um, so like I said, our three girls are here sleeping on sleep mats. If you're interested in more how I set up the inside of our tent, I have a video on that. I will link that above and below. It's in my camping video playlist, so you guys can check that out. Um, the more independent you can get them, the better. But let me tell you, when they were all younger, it was definitely hard um, camping because you are still doing a lot for a lot of them. But now that they're on the older end side, they each have, I don't know if you can see it over there, um, a packing cube. They each have two packing cubes. So those are my daughters down there. They keep one at the end of their bed that has, uh, and there's a couple down here too. So they each have their own colored packing cube at the end of the bed. And the one that stays at the end of their bed contains their shirts, socks, underwear and then um, if as they get older it'll obviously keep other undergarments in there um, and then in the kids suitcase right here I have a second packing cube and that has an extra pair of pajamas and all of their jeans that are, they are wearing my kids wear jeans up while we're camping all the time and that's just for safety 
up here because there's bound to be tree roots that they're going to trip on, which they have. Um, it's because while they're on their bicycles, I want them to, their legs to be protected in case of scraped knees. The jeans have saved them so many times um, from getting hurt. So that's just what they wear. So they wear a pair of jeans for two days in a row. After the first day, they put them on the ground at the bottom of their bed so that they are ready for them for the second day. And then they just get out the rest of their clothes from their packing cube. So this used to be something that I had to do for them as they were younger. But now that they're older, they do that. Also, I think last year's video when I showed you the inside of our tent, um, I would show, I, I talked about how I set up each of their beds before I got out of the tent each morning, made sure their pajamas and socks and all of that were set up too so that it was really simple for them to come in here and get their own pajamas on. This year, my my girls have remembered and they really like having the beds set up nicely and everything so they have been making their own beds making them nice and putting their pajamas in a place for them to find them at night so that has helped tremendously as well because that's one less thing for me to do in the morning and it's giving and they're taking responsibility for it now my almost five-year-old son over here I still help him you know just putting his bed kind of back together with his pajamas on top and I'll grab a new pair of underwear out set it on his pajamas so he has it ready to go at night when he comes in here but he is dressing himself pretty much all the time while we're here so that's kind of how we handle um, sleeping arrangements with the kids and then over here in the corner we have sorry for all the dirty clothes <laughs> but we are towards the end of our stay here we have a little portable toilet and this toilet is used by all of us girls um, at night before we go to bed and then in the morning when we wake up and that's the only time we use it and it's only for liquid waste uh, so this has been a lifesaver instead of having to trek everyone down to the bathroom um, every night and doing that whole ordeal it's just so much easier having them just all be able to come into the camp, you know, into the tent, get ready for bed, do a last minute potty stop in our tent, and then um, they can go straight into bed. And then especially in the mornings when you've gone the whole night and you really need to go in the morning, um, we again don't have to try to make it all the way out to the bathroom. We just go in here. So it's not used during the day. Uh, we do go out to the bathroom there during the day, but at early morning at night and if anyone had to go to the bathroom during the night it's a lifesaver for that as well I love, you. I love you too my son does not use it um, we just have him you know do his stuff outside uh, you know in a bush or something because he can do that so we just have him do that before he gets in the tent at night and then in the morning when we're all up and you know getting going so that's how we handle my son but all the girls do it in here but I'll also show you go back outside and show you um how we handle the non-liquid potty times for our young kids when they're like toddler age um and they're not old enough to take a buddy to go out to the camp bathrooms you know by their on their own so I'm gonna go show you how we handle toddlers We've done potty training up here with this and it's worked out really well. So let me go show you what we do for that. Alrighty, so this is our little froggy pot. I'm pretty sure it's just a Fisher Price toilet that I got, I'm sure at Walmart. We have brought this up for many, many years um, and it has been a lifesaver. So I will take a grocery bag, like, you know, just an old Walmart grocery bag. We'll line this with it and put a couple paper towels on the inside just to absorb any liquids um but this is used in that manner for when they have a solid waste time and then we just um you know tie it together and throw it out with the rest of our trash that might not be how you would do something but this is how it's worked out really well for us and not having to take a toddler all the way up to the you know communal bathrooms it's really, really, really helped with that. So this is what my son uses um, because we aren't ready yet to have him go in the communal ones to do all of that. It just, it's so much easier. Um, no, it's not the pri most private, but 
for him being at the, you know, the age he's at, we're okay with that. We could check it away more in our campsite if we wanted to. Um, when the girls were younger and we used this for everything, so we never took them to the communal bathrooms uh, if it was just liquid we would have them go straight in that we would dump it out somewhere in the woods and then rinse it out with some water um, so the only time we use the plastic bags with the paper towels in it is when it's going to be solid waste um, if you need more privacy we also could put it inside this is our shower so we just hang up tarps here and then we could put uh, the toilet in there and it gives them a lot more privacy so especially if it was one of our older girls and they needed um we didn't want them to go to the communal oh there's my son in there the communal bathrooms they could go in there i'm going to show you inside here in a minute because this is actually we also use it not just for a shower where's your sandals baby um i think they're over here in front of our they're probably over here in front of our tent just go walk over there it's okay <laughs> so I don't think I've ever shown you guys the inside of this shower area before but my husband rigs it up with ropes and this is mule tape it's really strong and then we have a shower bag that'll go on a carabiner and just hang from this rope up here and drape down here um, we also bring in like a low a chair here with a bucket a really big like tub fill it up halfway with cold water get some hot water going on the stove and fill up the rest of the way with the hot water and then just take a big plastic cup and you can scoop it up and just pour it on yourself um, that's how I prefer to do the shower just because the shower bags the stream you get out of it is so like so little it really is makes it hard to get your hair washed and everything we put a tarp down here so you can have stand on something that's clean but like I was saying so that's the shower portion but we use this as a changing room as well so our kids are not going in and out of our tent all the time bringing dirt in and out you know constantly because as you saw there's not a lot of room in there to stand around it really truly is just for sleeping in so there's this log here my husband actually put it up last year because we've had this campsite for many years in a row and so he put this log up here and so all of their bathing suits rash guards are here they will come in here and change they'll leave their clothes in here get their bathing suits on for when we go down to the lake we'll go have fun they'll come back and they'll change here leave their stuff there and then we'll go put it up on the line again so this is an awesome way to have a shower and a changing room for our kids and help them to stay out of our tent as much as possible Okay, to go along with the bathroom stuff, since I talked about what we do with toddlers. Um, oh, and we potty trained my oldest daughter when she was up here. When we were up here, she was a little over two and a half. And that worked out great because we just kept her in underwear the whole time. And so if she had any accidents and no pants, if she had any accidents, it wasn't a big deal. So if you're, you know, at the stage of potty training, you might want to consider doing that. Um, but as far as our older kids go, now that they go in the communal toilets, we do use a buddy system. So they have to go at least with, with either an adult or a sibling um, to go up there to the bathrooms regardless. You know, uh, they have to go with somebody for safety reasons and stay together. So that's how we handle doing communal bathrooms while we're camping. All right. So for going potty on the road, like for... Um, just road trips in general but also for camping here we do have this travel little potty thing these legs fold out um, but then they also collapse in really compactly and you use these bags um, they're disposable and uh, potty liners so this is the brand for this and they just go inside there they have a little pad that absorbs on the inside and then you tie it up and throw it away wherever you need to I believe they are yes they are biodegradable so if you were concerned about that at all these are eco-friendly so we use this little system and we've used it since my oldest was a toddler and she got potty trained and it has worked wonderful we just keep all of the supplies in a bag here I keep some wipes and hand sanitizer in here as well so this has been a great addition to um, just traveling in general for us. 
I have been asked in other videos in the comments what my kids do for fun while we're at pier, like what games do we bring, you know, how do they entertain themselves. So one of the big things is bike riding. Now granted, this is also something as they've gotten older, it's something that they're more comfortable with up here because it's not not flat ground, not always even ground. Um, there's bumps in the road and things like that. So the older they've gotten, the more comfortable we've been with them doing this. Uh, so we do bring up bikes. They love biking around. We happen to be in a spot with our in our campground um, where there is a loop around. It's hard to see with the light, but there is a loop here that goes down here and then it comes back around this way. So it's not really big, it is uphill one way, um, and this is back to our site right here. Uh, so they've gotten a lot of practice getting to go on this loop. It's not, although there's cars coming now, it's not a heavily trafficked um, loop. So they, we feel fairly comfortable with them and you know, we've trained them on, if a car comes, you stop and you go to the side of the road. Uh, this is also in the middle here. This truck is actually coming to get um, recycling from behind me, so if it's loud, sorry about that. This this site in the middle is actually where my parents are. Um, they're here with us, and then my in-laws are the site right over there. So that also helps too that we have three out of the five sites in this loop are part of our family, so that also helps to make us, you know, a little more secure here with the kids going and biking around um, but then we also take them into the Christian camp that's maybe a 10 to 15 minute walk away from here so we bike them they bike in there um, so they get practice doing that but again that's like really bumpy area and then over to one of the sandy beaches on the lake sometimes they'll bike over there so that's something that um, they do for fun. My kids really enjoy it um, and it's just something we've done for our younger kids once they're the baby's about nine months old we'll put a baby seat on the back of my husband's bike and he'll take them on bike rides and things like that we've also done a tag-along bike um, for our younger kids that are you know obviously not ready to bike on their own yet we have tried bikes with training wheels up here before and that's just really really tough on the kid what baby okay training wheels are just really really hard to manage so if your kids are doing training wheels I don't know I don't know I don't think I would do it again bring up a bike with training wheels for my kids just because it's it's really frustrating for them you, it's a lot more effort going into um, trying to bike so take it for what you will um, how you want to handle that but that is definitely one way my kids entertain themselves we have our kids try to entertain themselves as much as possible while we're up here and not necessarily bring up things for them to do other than things like biking and things like that um, we're not trying to entertain them every single second of every day and they do get bored, so, um, but that's just part of it. Other things that they do, you can see we have hammocks set up on our site, so they are welcome to swing or, you know, lay around in a hammock. That's always enjoyable. Um, if my kids were into reading, bringing up books they might enjoy. My One of my nephews is up here right now, and he really enjoys reading, so that's something he's been doing. Um, my kids are playing with their cousins a lot, which is a lot of fun because we don't always have cousins up here to play with. If there were kids around and it wasn't in the middle of COVID, they would probably be going and making friends with kids. We are very comfortable on this site because like I said, we've been on this site for a number of years. It's a nice little loop right here that's pretty safe and secure. And we're very familiar with this campground in general because my father-in-law has been coming up here since he was a kid and taking his family up and our family up. So um, they will go on little adventures nearby. There's actually kind of like a little creek past this fencing back here with this campsite and our kids will go to the other side all together and go on little adventures in the woods over there. But like I said, we're comfortable here because we've been here so much that we know what's going on and they kind of know the layout. They've been here so many times. And so they really enjoy going on adventures with each other. A safety measure that my mother-in-law 
told me about was getting whistles either on a string around their neck or around you know a little thing around their wrist so that and you train them that if they are lost, need help, they blow the whistle, they sit down on their bottom, blow the whistle and wait for help to come. So that is one way to also help with the safety issue of it. But they love going on adventures. So either biking, adventuring like that on their you know, hiking type adventures. We go down and play at the in the water at the lake a lot. I bring up a small amount of sand toys and I'll film a little bit of that for you too if I can. Um, what it looks like there. We also bring up nets and bug catchers so they can go either trying to catch things near the lake or around the site and they have many times in years past. One of my daughters last year got, we finished off a carton of eggs. It was a plastic carton from Costco and she took the carton and would fill it up with dirt and try to find bugs and put them in there too. So that was something else she enjoyed doing. One of my daughters just reminded me it was fuzzy caterpillars that she was collecting in there. So that was fun. Um, my almost nine year old daughter right now is down at the lake with his uncle with her uncle and cousin and they're fishing right now. So as they've gotten older, They've gotten, some of them gotten to fishing and wanting to do that, so they enjoy that. Obviously that does take an adult to go with you, um, so that's not totally independent play. Something that my mother-in-law's mother-in-law did, so my husband's grandmother, when they came up camping all together, she would bring craft supplies for all of her grandchildren. <laughs> She would bring some craft supplies up for her grandchildren, so markers, like Elmer's glue, possibly paint, um, and she'd just bring up like the basics, and so the kids would go to grandma's site and um, get to do little nature crafts. She'd bring up plain white paper plates, like just the little cheap, the cheap ones, um, and they could glue um, sticks and leaves and things onto it, make their own nature scene and so my mother-in-law has done that as well every year she brings up craft supplies so she so my kids like to go to grandma's site to get to do crafting and things like that and they've made some really cool um pictures and whatnot with it so that's another fun thing so that's something that if we weren't always camping with them um that possibly i would bring up but i always know that she's going to have it because that's just her traditional thing to do that she was always looking forward to doing once she became a grandma so those are some of the things that our kids do for entertainment and if i can think of any more i will let you know that all right i know i talked about this in my video on camping with a baby but i wanted to mention it here too because we have used this stroller <laughs> pretty much since we have had kids that we've been camping with um so this is a bob single stroller so it's jogging stroller it has been a huge lifesaver in so many ways while we've been camping with kids from having it as a place to put our baby when we've needed to besides just transporting them around through you know throughout the campsite and campground um it's also been wonderful for toddler aged children um if we go on a walk around the lake you know they get tired so it's something for them to be able to sit in and rest in besides carrying you know supplies for the rest of us waters wipes if we need them snacks or anything like that so that's been huge for that um one of the things i <laughs> like it most for with toddlers is around the campfire at night we can strap them in and know that they're going to be safe and not getting too near the fire or anything like that but they can still be with us near the campfire at night so this has been huge for us and no matter how cramped our uh, space is in being able to pack things I always try to bring this with us and I collapse it down and then take the wheels off and put those in a separate like trash large trash bag that really helps it to be able to fit into more spaces inside a vehicle so that's just a little tip I have on packing it um, we store it at night over there near the bear box and I'll show you a little clip right here of how I have a um, like a twin sized black sheet just a cheap one from Walmart over it to help keep 
dirt off of it, um, hopefully bugs from crawling it. We've had really bad years with beetles up here, so it helped keep beetles out of it, having that over it, as well as it kind of, in a way, camouflages it while it's on the campsite and we are not on the campsite because we've gone somewhere else. Uh, your water bottle's in the water bag there, baby, on the table. Uh, so that just kind of helps camouflage it a little bit. While um, we're not here, it's not just glaringly obvious that there's, you know, a stroller that we've left behind. Um, speaking of water, since my son just talked about that, this is another thing that I do, and it's not just for camping, it's for even when we go to amusement parks and things. I just have this cooler bag here, and all of my kids' water bottles fit in that, and we call it the water bag. <laughs> and so we use these same waters inside the tent at night, as well as throughout the day, wherever we're going. So the kids have just been trained that this is the water bag. Their waters are typically in here when we're somewhere. I like to put that bag underneath the stroller there when we go walking or someplace else, and they know they can just grab them out of there. Toys. Um, grab them out of there, and also that's where they put them back. So training your kids on little things like that also helps a lot because it helps them to be more independent. Um, we also train them on how to put their sunscreen on their faces and arms and legs by themselves. That has helped tremendously. So we have these camp mirrors right here. We give them a camp mirror, some sunscreen, and then they can put their own sunscreen on and that helps us. You know, when they're younger, obviously we had to do it ourselves, but as they've gotten older and we were able to train them, they do it at home that way too. Um, it has just helped tremendously in cutting back on time, especially the more kids we've had. Um, just being able to get out and get to do things because it does take us a while to get out of the campsite each day with the kids because there's just so many things to do by the time you're done eating breakfast and cleaning it up and then getting everything ready to go do whatever it is you want to do it's like before you know it it's lunchtime so the more that you can train them on little things like that and like i said when they were younger we weren't doing that it's as they've gotten older my son is able to do it for the most part, I'd say if it was one of my daughters his age, so again, he's almost five in a couple months, um, they probably by his age would have been, I, I think we would have had them doing it by then. So, I mean, it's not till they're close to five years old, I think, that we would start having them do it on their own and, you know, trust that they're not going to get sunscreen in their eyes and make sure they do a thorough enough job. But again, we had to train them on this. It wasn't just a given that they could all of a sudden start putting sunscreen on their faces. Um, so that's just something else we've done. Um, oh. say hi. Someday you'll have to put sunscreen on your face too. Uh, let's see. Sorry if that last clip didn't have the best audio. I forgot to flip my microphone around. Anyhow. Let's talk about hygiene while we're up here. Um, so we just lower expectations as far as hygiene goes, especially for our kids. Um, we have the shower set up, but that's more so always been for the adults to use, as well as obviously using it as that changing area and possibly a bathroom area as well. Um, so our oldest daughter yesterday for the first time took her first independent shower in there um, just because she was begging us to. So it's just not something that we normally do up here and that's just the normal. Um, we do get dirt off in the lake because we go just about every single day and we go swim. So that helps a lot too. Um, and we brush teeth as we remember to. It's hard late at night after the campfire. Everyone's just really tired, wants to get in bed. So we don't push it for nighttime. We try to do it in the mornings instead. Um, and so our kids are not brushing their teeth twice a day. We're lucky if they even do it once a day. But again, our standards and expectations have just been lowered. Um, and that's, we figure for a week or however long we're up here, it's not a big deal. So we just, you know, you just kind of go with it while you're here. Don't anticipate or expect to have the same um, level, you know, standard, levels of standard, <laughs> standard levels, you know what I'm trying to say, while you're camping. It just probably won't be feasible while you're doing it. You just do the best that you can. So I've also been asked about games. Um, so part of entertainment for the kids. Uh, this is my first year to bring up this many games for our kids. These are just ones that I know that they will enjoy. So I have a video on my channel of great um, or good uh, games, board games that you can do as a family. 
and I've included a number of these in them. I have some card games as well. Uh, but this is the first year I brought up this many and it's because our kids are finally old enough that that's something that they might enjoy. If we're around the campsite more and they're a little more bored or something, um, they might choose to play a game, especially with their cousins that are here. And I'm anticipating as they get a little older and learn more card games with us that we'll start playing them a bit more. But in all honesty, we typically aren't around the campsite that much. We tend to be off doing things quite a bit. So there's not really hasn't been a need for games too much me growing up i um we would play games after dinner typically that's when i remember playing games but i was probably also more of a teenager at that time so i assume or i'm expecting as the kids get older that we will be playing more games but for now this is what we brought um and we have gotten into it some but not a whole lot um so this is what I had brought up, but so to answer that question of what about bringing up board games and things, this is what we've brought and so far it's been good. It is good to have a couple of games and we've brought up this Spotted Camping Edition. Um, and it's just kind of traditional for us. Have a couple games that your kids like in case it rains and you're stuck in your tent. That is not a bad thing to have on hand because uh, staying in the tent with a whole family can can get a little eh um, after a while. So maybe if you can have a couple of games that you might be able to bring up that people would enjoy or books or something that would also be good. Okay, so all that footage that you just saw was actually filmed back in 2020 and my camera battery died and I wasn't able to finish it and it just didn't happen last year to film anything. So I'm finishing it up now in 2022, um, but all pretty much all the tips that I just gave you still apply uh, for uh, camping with kids. Um, the only thing that I wanted to add was when I was talking about like having a whistle to go, you know, if your kids go out, they can have a whistle and that's still a great option, but something that we've actually changed, um, with that because the kids end up forgetting to wear them or, um, you know, it's, or I forget to get them out. Um, something that's even better, uh, especially now that they're a little older and can, have a little more responsibility with this is we use walkie talkies now. So that's actually super helpful because uh, you can actually communicate with them. Uh, and so we now bring up walkie talkies. Uh, it goes clear across the other side of the lake, which is a great bonus because um, my, my kids actually last year took a walk all the way around the lake because my in-laws purchased a cabin um, on the other side of the lake last year and so they wanted to go visit grandma and grandpa in their cabin so they had walkie talkies with them and they knew the way and they took them and they went all the way on the other side of the lake and did a surprise visit for grandma and grandpa so uh, that was a lot of fun for them but I'm very thankful we had the walkie talkies to be able to check in with each other and so that was just something that I also think would be um, a great option for keeping tabs on your kids while they're out exploring um, any of the items if there are any in this video that I talk about that you can get on Amazon, I know the walkie talkies are one that I've purchased on Amazon. I'll link those in my Amazon store and there'll be a um, link to that down below in case it's something you're interested in checking out. Um, but I think that's gonna do it for this it video. Uh, I hope you got some good tips or ideas um, from what I shared with you. If you have any ideas or tips that you want to share with the community, please feel free to leave those down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in any of my other camping related videos, I'll also have a link to that down below in the description box as well. All right, that's going to be it. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.